So with the relative success of my Goku Black manga version versus the anime version in their little characterization battle, uh, going over so well with the general public and me getting several requests, I decided to do a proper follow-up just as I kind of promised. Um, I was going to do Future Trunks in the manga versus the anime, but the manga version of his arc from Super still isn't over, much to the chagrin of a lot of people and kind of even myself. Um, so because Future Trunks' story isn't finished yet in the manga, it, it isn't really fair to judge um, the two versions because we haven't gotten their full stories yet. So instead, I'm going to be focusing on the anime and manga versions of Hit. Uh, just as I did with Goku Black, I'm going to give little synopses to what both of them do in their respective versions, how these two versions use them, and ultimately which one I think does things better. So Hit in both versions is the big, kind of like the big bad, quote-unquote, the big physical adversary of Goku from the Universe 6 tournament arc, and he's the strongest member of Universe 6. And unlike many other fighters in the Dragon Ball universe, Hit is kind of unique just conceptually based on the fact that he's an assassin. He is not a martial artist. Uh, he's not even really an antagonistic person. He's not villainous. He's not malicious inherently. He's just a dude who kills people for money, which isn't entirely uh, un unseen in the Dragon Ball universe. Like Vegeta, Raditz, Nappa, and a lot of Frieza's people were basically paid paid to, you know, murder and genocide the hell out of Universe 7. Um, but they weren't really assassins. They weren't really for hire. They always worked under Frieza. And even the Ginyu Force, who are a lot more like comedic antagonists, were also very kind of malicious people, even if they did have you know, maybe some quirks that made them stand out from Frieza, Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz. Um, all of these people were inherently malicious people who, you know, got a kick out of murdering, torturing, and just screwing with their adversaries. And so, it, it's not necessarily the same thing. Uh, Hit is inherently different from them in both versions, where Hit is fairly cool when it comes to his personality. He doesn't really show off much emotion. Um, he's, he's just a dude who's here for the money and for, who's here to get something and he's going to do whatever it takes to get it. Um, and there is no malice to him. There is no cackling evilness, which is kind of a hallmark of a lot of Dragon Ball antagonists for better or for worse. He is very much an assassin to his core. He's here to do a job and he's going to do it right. Um, and that already makes him kind of an interesting opponent to have for Goku. And he's an interesting dude to throw in a tournament setting because in both versions, he's a dude who is usually paid to outright kill people, not, you know, to train them, not to fight with them, just to outright kill them. And so both the manga and the anime use this for a couple of cool moments where Hit, like, beats up Vegeta, and he doesn't know what to do with Vegeta. He doesn't know if he should, like... Uh, toss him out of the ring? Should he, like, beat him up some more? Is he just supposed to let him lie down? In both versions, you get the sense that this is a dude who very much isn't a martial artist. This is a dude whose primary, um, you know, kind of instinct is to kill, and so throwing him in this tournament setting where he can't kill people and it's more about just beating your adversary is already kind of throwing him off inherently. Um, but like Goku Black... In the way that he's characterized between the manga and the anime, there are some stark differences, and the anime has a certain advantage that I'm not even sure is entirely fair to use in this comparison, but I feel like it warrants mentioning regardless um, over the manga version. Um, so I'm going to start up the manga version, where Hit, uh, Hit is not the great threat in the manga that he is in the anime, and this is kind of what Toyotaro keeps doing with his bad guys, where... He makes them seem a lot less impressive just to make the heroes look better. Like, when, Tor when Toriyama wrote Frieza, he wrote him as this big, unstoppable, borderline living force of nature where everybody had to throw basically fucking everything at the guy to just try and kill him. Vegeta tried several Zenkais and it failed. Gohan raged out at him twice and it failed. Krillin tried to cut him in half multiple times and it failed, Piccolo got a big-ass power-up and it failed, and Frieza was just this big, 
you know, brick wall that everybody spent a massive amount of time in the manga and the anime just throwing shit at to try and kill him, and they barely succeeded, and that was only just because of a bunch of flukes and Frieza being kind of a dumbass. Um, but if Toyotaro wrote that whole thing, Frieza would just randomly become like a weak scrub just to make the heroes look better. Toyotaro has this kind of weird tendency with his villains, or his rather his opponents for his antagonists, where he makes them look kind of like, like even more of dumbasses than they already are, much less impressive just to prop up the good guys. And this is the unfortunate situation with Hit in the manga, where... Uh, um, whereas the anime treats Hit as like this constantly like evolving opponent who's getting better with Goku and he's constantly like right on top of Goku and Goku just has to keep trying his best to just, you know, hold his own against this guy. In the manga, Hit is already outclassed by Super Saiyan God um, and he just cannot beat Super Saiyan Blue. Like, the manga makes a bigger deal out of the fact that Hit cannot use his killer techniques uh, and that's kind of like his big handicap, and that's why he can't, you know, compare to Blue Goku in the manga. But this does not really work if you're setting this guy up as, like, the big threat of your arc, and then you just have him being weaker than the second strongest transformation your protagonist has. Like, you need to do something with him to make him more impressive, and Toyotaro doesn't really do that for Hit's character in the manga. Hit just powers up. And he says that he hasn't powered up in so long to his maximum power that he can't hold on to it for very long. And then Goku just powers up over him. Um, which is a problem in both the manga and the anime, and I'm going to address it later on. Um, another thing that kind of makes the, the fight against Hit more boring in uh, the manga than it is in the anime for me is the fact that there isn't really a plotline about the gods. Uh, throughout the anime version, Beerus and Champa are constantly getting into these big arguments, and this ultimately culminates in them just flat out saying, you guys, you know, the fighters from Universe 7 and 6, you're just pawns. You're just here to serve as a way for, the, for me and Beerus to fight one another, um, and you're just pawns. You don't really matter. We don't care about you. Um, and then there's this really great moment where Hit and and um, where Hit and Goku collectively, you know, decide to forfeit their matches just to kind of fuck over Beerus and Shampa, you know, to just screw them over because these people keep treating them like tools. And it's really interesting that anime Hit does this because he, like I said, he's a paid assassin. He is he should be used to being treated like a tool. But it is really cool to see how his kind of kind of respect for martial arts and his respect for Goku lets him kind of think more like a martial artist where he doesn't really like the fact that these two whiny, bitchy little gods are using him as a tool, which is what his usual profession, you know, calls for him to be. So that's an interesting kind of whole dynamic that enriches the Universe 6 arc, which in both versions, like in the manga and the anime, is really whatever. It's a big whatever arc that isn't really compelling, but it is something that the anime has that the manga doesn't, that enriches not just the overall arc, but hits character in the arc itself. Um, but with regards to the manga, the manga makes a lot more sense when it comes to Hit's power, where Hit cannot just improve time skip just because. Um, the implication is that he hits time skip in the manga is a fixed thing. It only ever can be used to skip this particular amount of time, and that's it. And the reason I say this is, this makes a lot more sense than the anime version is because the, the implication of the anime version is that Hit is really fucking powerful, like absurdly powerful, but in all this time that he's been around, the thousand years that he's been operating, he has apparently never, ever, ever met anybody in Universe 6, which seems to be, on average, a lot more powerful than Universe 7. He has never met anybody in Universe 6 who has apparently made him train. He has never apparently trained a day in his life. He's never really improved himself. And so this it creates this really weird thing where a kid was apparently just born Super Saiyan Blue tier, and throughout the thousand years he's been around, he has never, ever, ever fought anybody to, like, improve time skip. And the reason why I dislike the whole improving of the time skip thing, and the reason why I kind of dislike the fight in the anime and the manga between Goku and Hit, 
is the fact that it just comes down to more Dragon Ball one-upsmanship. Um, as the series progressed, uh, you know, into like the Namek arc and into the Frieza fight and into Cell and into Boo, the Dragon Ball fights became, well, Dragon Ball fights were never overtly about strategy. They were never particularly strategic and power was always kind of like a big deciding factor. But when we got to transformations and power-ups and all that shit that made the series iconic and popular for better or for worse, Dragon Ball fights just become a game of one-upsmanship where... If one dude has Super Saiyan 1, for example, and the other dude gets Super Saiyan 2, that's it. He wins. Um, or the other dude gets does Super Saiyan 2 as well, and then the other guy does Super Saiyan 3, and then he beats him again. And there's this constant just game of one-upsmanship where it's always about who can power up more, who can pull out another form or, or power up or something to increase their overall stats and just beat the other guy. And the manga and anime version of the Goku versus Hit fight, they do this really interesting setup where Goku has to actually use strategy to beat Hit. He can't just fight this guy the way he can fight anybody else. He has to, like, predict Hit's movements. He has to, you know, on, 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 on the fly figure out, oh, shit, this guy's going to come at me from here. So, like a, sec like, a tenth of a second beforehand, I have to, like, put my knee in the right position to block him or else he's going to, like, kick me in the nuts. It's that kind of a thing. And the manga actually does this to really great effect, where there's this whole fight between Super Saiyan Goku and Hit, where they're just fighting one another, and it's this really insane showcase of Goku's skill, and as well as Hit's abilities, and it's really, really cool. And I wish the fight was more like that in both versions, um, because it just becomes a, a shitty game of Dragon Ball one-upsmanship. Um, both in the manga and the anime, when Goku just gets put against a wall, and he can't just use strategy to win, he just powers up to something bigger and betterer, and he wins again. Uh, like in the manga, he uses Super Saiyan God and then Super Saiyan Blue, and he wins. Um, in the anime, he brings out Kaioken, and then he powers up with that, so he can keep going on with Hit. So, both versions start out with a really interesting premise, and could have resulted in a really interesting battle, but both versions kind of succumb to the whole issue of Hit is beaten not because Goku was smarter than him or because he's just like a smarter fighter or whatever. Goku lasts against Hit as much as he does just because he's got more fucking forms and power-ups in his ass that he can pull out to power himself up more. So that is kind of a really, you know, shitty aspect of both versions of this battle. And I dislike it both versions here. I really dislike the fact that we set up hit as an opponent where you can't just power on through him and then you just kind of beat him well beat him quote unquote by powering on through him um another thing that has to be taken into account and this is not even particularly fair uh to manga hit necessarily is the fact that manga hit and anime hit at the end of the universe six arc they're left at this place where, he, where their battles with Goku are unresolved. And Goku and Hit are going to meet and fight again to kind of see where they stand, like, down the line, and to kind of sort out this business between them. And the anime, very smartly, I don't know if they planned this, I'm gonna assume not, because the writing for Super is just majoritively bad, and I'm just gonna chalk this up to as, like, a happy coincidence, but in the anime, after the Future Trunks arc, Goku and Hit actually resolve this. They actually battle one another after some time apart, after they've both kind of improved, and they cut loose, they use almost all their techniques, and it is this kind of big battle where the two of them just kind of resolve their business with one another from the Universe 6 arc. And this is going to work narratively because the anime has already set up Jiren the Grey as Goku's next big multiversal nemesis. And the manga is not going to have this because the manga is supremely late. Like, we're going to get to the tournament of power right now in the anime, and Toyotaro still hasn't finished the Future Trunks arc, and he is going to be behind by default. He is going to fall behind no matter what happens. And it's because of this that I really don't think that we're going to get a resolution to this whole Hit versus Goku thing in the manga, because Jiren is going to be Goku's next big adversary, but in the manga continuity, Goku hasn't really resolved anything with Hit. 
So we're going to get this awkward kind of story situation where we're going to get Jiren as Goku's next big threat, but we're not really going to get to resolve Hit versus Goku, unless Toyotaro is going to do something where Goku's going to resolve Jiren and Hit all at the Tournament of Power, um, which could happen. Toyotaro is kind of a mad dog when it comes to his story developments, for better or for worse, depending on who you ask. But honestly, I would not be surprised at this whole idea of Goku and Hit you know, having a rematch and sorting out their business just doesn't come to fruition in the manga, whereas the anime has resolved this and it's kind of completed what the purpose of Hit was. Hit was supposed to be like the big, the first big adversary Goku fights from the multiverse. Goku has surpassed him and now he's moving on to bigger and better things, whereas the manga is just going to kind of skip Hit over and it's probably just going to kind of forget about this whole development entirely. So... Yeah, unless you can't tell, I'm not particularly crazy about either version of the story here. I feel like the main advantage manga hit has is that he makes a lot more sense power-wise, and I do appreciate the fact that the manga actually uses Goku's whole strategy for more than five adjacent seconds before just abandoning it entirely, but the way Hit is used in the story, not not necessarily his characterization, but the way he's used like as a device to tell like a message or to advance Goku's like character in the manga he is just severely lacking and as a big opponent he's also severely lacking because Goku in Super Saiyan fucking God is perfectly capable of beating him almost even at his maximum power so that is a big detriment to Hit's character just like the fact that he is probably not going to get a proper resolution to his whole battle with Goku and their little rivalry that they set up for one another. Um, the anime version certainly makes considerably less sense when it comes to how his powers function, and in both versions I really dislike the fact that it turns into a generic Dragon Ball game of one-upsmanship to beat them, but Hit never really comes off as, you know, kind of like a weakling or incompetent. He comes off as a great threat no matter what, even at the cost of internal consistency, which is an issue. And he does get a proper resolution to his whole rivalry with Goku and him choosing to forfeit, not just out of respect for Goku, but also kind of to screw over Beerus and Champa. Uh, for using him like a tool. It's a very interesting little thematic thing that I like in the anime that the manga just doesn't have whatsoever. So both versions aren't great, uh, but ultimately kind of like a Goku Black, I had to kind of give this to the anime. I feel like the anime actually does a good job of keeping Hit a legitimate threat who warranted the hype that was kind of surrounding him at the time. And I feel like it uses him in more interesting ways. Um, I like the fact how it uses him, and it, it's not great stuff by any means at all. Hit's not a particularly interesting character inherently. He just feels kind of like a knockoff of Pycon, who is also kind of a knockoff of Piccolo, and Jiren looks like he's going to be a knockoff of Hit. So neither Hit inherently as a character is not particularly interesting to me, um, and the things that are kind of interesting about him aren't really emphasized enough to compensate for his inherent blandness. But ultimately, I'm going to have to go with the anime version here. I feel like they at least do some more interesting things with him as like a, as like, like, like a framing device and as a physical opponent for Goku, and they actually properly resolve him, whereas the manga version is most definitely not going to get that luxury. So yeah, anime hit wins just in terms of who's like a better realized character and who is used in the story more effectively. So yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on anime hit versus manga hit. Uh, do you agree with me? Which version do you prefer? And hopefully, Tanitaro is going to finish the Future Trunks arc so I can talk about Future Trunks anime versus the manga because that one is really, really fascinating and also really divisive and polarizing regardless of which version you prefer over the other. And that's going to make for a really interesting comparison video down the line when we get to it hopefully a month from now. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.